today we are going to discuss about fundamental rights before going to discuss about the fundamental rights let us try to understand the historical evolution of the and the historical demands for the fundamental rights the indians desires for civil rights had its roots in deep in 19th century it was implicit in the formation of indian national congress in the year of 1885 1885 was the establishment year of indian national congress and after that a series of inc resolutions passed in between 1917 and 1919 in between these two years number of resolutions adopted by the indian national congress those resolutions repeatedly demanded for the civil rights and equality of status with englishman and after congress party passed a resolution in the year of 1927 which declared that the basis of future indian indian constitution must be declaration of fundamental rights this was the historical demands made by the indian national congress leaders regarding the fundamental rights right let us try to understand the definition of right what is meant by right why they are called fundamental rights definition a right which is claimed by individual claimed by individual and second one that should be recognized by the state here state means government the right should be recognized by the government and third one that should be accepted by the society and finally that should be enforceable by law so if anything said to if anything said to be right it has to satisfy these conditions once we recall the conditions for a right a right is that should be claimed by individual and recognized by the state and accepted by the society and enforceable by the law then only it said to be a right now let us try to understand the features are of fundamental rights before that one why they are called fundamental what is the reason for they are called as a fundamental rights they are called as a fundamental rights because they are mentioned in the fundamental law of the land here fundamental law of the land means constitution constitution is also known as the fundamental law of the land they are mentioned in the constitution so that is why they are called as fundamental rights they are mentioned or enumerated in the fundamental law of the land that is nothing but the constitution so that is why they are called as the fundamental right that is the first reason and the second reason is they are justiciable in nature justiciable in nature means in case of the violation of the fundamental rights then the aggrieved person can move to the court for his rights the courts are responsible for the implementation of the fundamental rights in other words judiciary act as a watchdog of the fundamental rights in case of the violation the aggrieved person can move to the court so that is why they are called as the fundamental rights now let us try to understand the features of the fundamental rights what are the various features of fundamental rights first one they are not absolute that means they are subjected to the suspension suspension of rights
during the operation of national emergency under article 352 the rights guaranteed under article 19 suspended automatically suspended it also article 352 not only suspends article 19 it also suspends article 32 also which means during the suspension of the fundamental rights the man a person cannot move to the court for his fund rights under article 32 article 32 provides a constitutional remedies for the fundamental rights under article 32 an aggrieved person can move to the court for the enforcement of his right but whenever the fundamental rights are suspended during the operation of national emergency he cannot move to the court that is also article 32 also suspended this is the first feature they are in suspension of fundamental rights and second feature is citizens alone enjoy fundamental rights citizens alone fundamental rights the another important feature of the fundamental rights is some of them only guaranteed to the citizens of india in other words some of the rights enjoyed only by indian citizens no other alien citizens cannot enjoy the fundamental rights but at the same time there are some rights like right to life right to religion and right to against exploitation these rights can be enjoyed by the citizens of india as well as the aliens here the constitution aptly draw the distinction between the citizens of india and alien citizens in the matters relating to the enjoyment of the fundamental rights that is the second feature and third feature is they are restricted in nature which means the fundamental rights are not absolute and the courts can uh, and the state can impose some reasonable restrictions over the fundamental rights of the citizens that is the third feature they are restricted in nature and fourth feature is justiciable they are justiciable which means during the suspend during the violation of the fundamental rights a person can move to the court for the enforcement of his rights so these are the few features of the fundamental rights now let us try to understand the sources of the fundamental rights and various fundamental rights enumerated in the indian constitution the concept of the fundamental rights prior to that in the world the first written document relating the fundamental rights is known as magna carta magna carta means which means list of rights in the 16th century the british king granted some rights to the england citizens so that is in the in the form of magna carta magna carta is considered as a first to written document in the world regarding the fundamental rights and this is a one of the important topic we need to one of the important point we need to remember in the examination point of view which questions can be asked like this which one of the following is considered as a first to written document regarding the fundamental rights in the world so that is magna carta and after that these rights enumerated in the american constitution in the form of bill of rights in the form of bill of rights american constitution kept as uh, fundamental rights in its in its constitution in the form of the bill of rights the framers of our constitution were taken or borrowed the feature of the fundamental rights from the american constitution here again we need to remember this one is the important point in the examination point of view fundamental rights were taken from american constitution taken from the american constitution and they kept in the indian constitution in part 3 
under articles 12 to 35 part 3 and article 12 to article 35 of the indian constitution deals with the fundamental rights here the constitution itself classify the fundamental rights into the seven groups namely this classification was made or done by the constitution itself only not by ourselves the constitution itself classify the fundamental rights into the seven groups namely first one 14 to article 14 to article 18 right to equality second one article 19 to article 22 right to freedom third one article 23 24 right to against exploitation fourth one article 25 to 28 right to religious freedom fifth one 29 30 cultural and educational rights cultural and educational rights sixth one article 31 right to acquire and dispose property right to property seventh one article 32 right to constitutional remedies so these are the rights guaranteed by the constitution and the constitution classify them into a seven groups namely article 14 to 18 right to equality 19 to 22 right to freedom and 23 24 right to against exploitation 25 to 28 right to religious freedom and 29 30 cultural and educational rights 31 right to acquire and dispose property 32 right to constitutional remedies but today we have only six fundamental rights these are seven rights were enumerated till 1978 but today we have only six fundamental rights why because by 44th constitutional amendment act 1978 44th constitutional amendment act 1978 enacted by the janata government under the leadership of the morarji desai and this 44th amendment act 1978 eliminated the right to property from the list of the fundamental rights as of now today we have only six fundamental rights because of this 40 this is one of the important bit we need to remember in the examination point of view right to property was deleted by which one of the following amendment act that is 44th amendment act and question can be asked like this also which one of the following right was ceased to be operate as a fundamental right that is right to property so as a because of the 44th amendment act right to property was deleted from the list of the fundamental rights as a result today we have only six fundamental rights in the indian constitution now what is article 
already we know that fundamental rights are start from article 12 to article 35 but right here right we wrote only article 14 to 18 but what about article 12 and article 13 now we are going to understand what is article 12 and the article 13 first one what article 12 definition of state here again recall state means government here article 12 defines what is meant by government accordingly state includes first one union executive and legislature union executive and union legislature that means central government and parliament and second one state executive and legislature and third one local bodies and fourth one LIC, RBI, sale, gale, these are also comes under the definition of the state under article 12. Along with these, any private organization or a private body which was financed partly or completely by any of the above state that is also comes under the definition of the state under article 12. But here what we need to remember is judiciary is not comes under the definition of the state under article 12. In many examinations question were asked like this which one of the following is not comes under the definition of the state under article 12. So, judiciary is not comes under the definition of state under article 12. This is one of the important point in the examination point of view. Judiciary is not comes under the definition of the state under article 12. Now, what is article 13? Doctrine of Eclipse which article 13 says that whatever the pre-constitutional laws, whatever the laws enacted before the commencement of Indian constitution. Why? Because India attains independence in the era of 1947. But constitution came into force from 1950. So, whatever the laws passed in between these years, if those laws against the fundamental rights, those laws cannot be enforceable. In other words, those laws cease to be operate. That is doctrine of eclipse, provided only those laws which are in the nature of against the fundamental rights. Indirectly, Article 13 empowers the judiciary to the judicial review. That is Article 13, Doctrine of Eclipse. Once we recall, what is meant by Doctrine of Eclipse? Doctrine of Eclipse means whatever the pre-constitutional laws which are against to the, which are in the nature of against to the fundamental rights, those laws will not be enforceable and those laws will not be implemented or those laws cease to be operate. That is Article 13, Doctrine of Eclipse. Now, we are going to understand the various rights that is from Article 14. Already we know that Article 14 to Article 18, right to equality. Now, Article 14. Article 14 has two parts. One is equality before law. and 